someone sometime told you I was enlightened. Don't trust them. <laughs> you can't know this. And I can't prove it to you, so it doesn't matter, right? Actually the truth truth is not an information, it's an experience. So what matters is what you'll get out of it. Okay? For some people, enlightenment is paying the correct amount to a certain group, okay? sect or religion. For some other people, it's uh, consuming good products. Some people are enlightened, you know? <laughs> I need to put a bit of humor in there. Uh, please bear with my French accent, because, <clears throat> well, I have a French accent. Okay. Let's say you go out in the desert of Africa and you try to explain snow. All right? Snow is white cotton falling from the sky. It's cold and when it touches you it becomes water. He's going to wonder if you're in line. Okay. <laughs> Basically, you can take the people from the desert who never experienced snow, bring them comfortably where there is snow, and they touch it, they taste it, they go ah, like this, so it falls on their tongue like children. They play, send themselves snowballs, and now they get it. Ah, snow! Now you just say the word, makes sense. It's white cotton falling from the sky, it's cold, when it touches you it becomes water. Okay? So we use words to refer to experiences. Enlightenment is such a word. So, did you experience enlightenment? Uh -huh. Okay. So, regardless of how much effort I would put into explaining enlightenment, you'll get it when you get there. So, nothing can prove you who I am. So, you should just forget it. Don't trust me, right? Don't fear me, please. <laughs> but don't trust me either. Trust your experience. Trust yourself. Trust what you will feel Trust what you will experience. You'll be motivated through different states of being. Okay? That has value. That is worth something because you'll feel it. And if you feel that this is not your place, you will be blessed with something called free will. Okay? Because no one has power over your mind. And if you don't like the experience you feel here, Respect yourself. If you like the experience you feel here, respect yourself. And keep on, if you like it, okay? So, do what you want. Right? But don't take my word for it. Okay? I can't prove to you what is it, enlightenment. What we can do is experience stuff, okay? So we'll play. From now on, we play, okay? We'll do mind tricks and word games and laugh and find ourselves stupid. Or you can find me stupid, I, it's okay. And we'd be happy. So, first game we'll play. Please close your eyes and breathe. Imagine that every cell of your body is a happy face. Imagine every part of you is smiling. Your blood cells are happy faces roaming in your body. Your neurons are happy faces sending smiles in your nervous system. And you contemplate the experience of happiness. And you breathe deeply. <sighs> now, come back here. That was an experience. Some of you got the feeling of being happy. Did you have a good reason to be happy? You simply concentrated on it. Okay? True happiness is the happiness that you experience when you have no reason. Okay? If you have happiness because of your wonderful wife or husband, eventually the people die or go away or are sick. Okay? If you're happy because you have this wonderful job, You'll lose it, you'll retreat, you'll retire, you'll get sick and drop out, you'll get fired, something will happen. It will go away. Eventually. In the next 500 years, you'll lose your job somehow, okay? Maybe. I mean, 
there are possibilities, but <laughs> a lot of negotiation to do. So, of course it's fun to have people we love around and a good job and things we like to possess. But the only happiness that will stay is the happiness that you have no reason to have because you want it. So did you find a certain feeling of happiness by contemplating the happy faces in your body? Yeah, there was something. You had no reason, but you felt it because you put your mind on it. Now I tricked you. Some of the suffering in your life you have simply because you want it. I proved it to you because you put your mind on it. All right, we're gonna talk about that tonight. We're not gonna talk about suffering. No, that's boring. We're gonna talk about happiness, okay? So the causes of suffering in life are, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> There's something that pulls us out of the state of happiness. We concentrate on wanting a wonderful life, and then something comes and pulls us out of the state of happiness. Sometimes even pushes us into the state of suffering. What the hell's going on? <laughs> we're screwed! We're gonna have to be happy and we're gonna have to suffer. That's life. Okay? You can take the blue pill or whatever this or that and they're gonna try to prove you that you can stay happy if you have the correct mindset. But not a single human being, especially the holy being and the saints, got there without an experience of suffering. Okay? It's part of life. You can learn to be comfortable in your suffering, of course. Okay? You can learn to be comfortable in your happiness. That's much better. Okay? All in all, <coughs> there is an equivalent amount of happiness and an equivalent amount of suffering in life. <coughs> Except for the extra bonus happiness, the one you have for no reason. The happiness you have with someone you love come close will be equivalent to the suffering you feel when it goes away. Through death, through mourning, through sickness, through trouble, through mindsets, conflict, regardless. Everything that is outside of you will carry its charge of happiness and suffering that is life. Except the happiness you have no reason for. The one you want because of mindset, concentration. But the good mindset will not prevent the flow of life and the natural forces to affect you. So there will be good moments and bad moments. Huh? That's cool. There's this dude, Jesus. Oh yeah, I'm a Buddhist. I should speak about the wisdom of Buddha. So, <coughs> two girls went to Jesus to say, you have to come and heal Lazarus because he's going to die. And what we usually learn is ask what you want in faith and you'll have it. Okay? Because Jesus eventually went and he raised them because he was dead. But that's not the story. Okay? There's a special line of text that no one puts emphasis on this. When the two sisters of Lazarus came to Jesus and said, Come, he's sick, he's going to die. Jesus turned his back, said, Why do you think this suffering is in vain? Do you know my father as a plan? That is the teaching of Jesus. Suffering has a purpose. It brings wisdom. Alright? No suffering, no wisdom. No happiness, no wisdom either. You need the range of experiences to get wisdom and know how to handle yourself and stay in balance. Another nice trick. <coughs> Put a young child on a bike when he's getting ready to roll on his own and explain intellectually all the importance of staying in balance on the bike. He's going to go out there and push, hurt himself. Once the child experiences the suffering of falling, you can try to explain the importance of throwing yourself on the ground. Okay? You can explain, get lawyers to build a case around the importance of not being in balance, this child will do everything in his power to stay in balance because there was suffering. That means that everything you did in life to explain to your children to avoid suffering was useless. 
what you can do is guide through the suffering and the happiness so that they will gain wisdom. But a sterile don't do that. Huh? Selena? Selena? Yes? A simple sterile don't do that. It won't work. Okay? They need experience to gain happiness and suffering so they will stay in balance in life. That's how it works. Okay? Hi. What's your name? Lynn. Look at Lynn. <laughs> okay. In case you didn't want attention by coming in, I just made sure you, you should know. <laughs> That's the way I used to break a subject and start a new one. All right. <laughs> so you you basically you 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 started to to compare what I'm saying to your own experience of life, saying, yeah, I tried to stay in balance in a few situations and I hurt myself. And because I hurt myself, I did everything to stay in balance and stop hurting myself, okay? It is through your own life experience that you found happiness. Most of the time when we are young, we are happy. Yes? Hmm? We don't know it because we do not suffer. Do you know light exists? You've never seen light. You only see the fabric of what emits it, you see what it is reflected upon, and you can see that there's something such as light. Why? Because if you put the lights out, you sure know there's darkness, and then, oh, there was light. All right? Through darkness, you abstract that there is light. Through suffering, you deduct there is happiness. Okay? Levels of comfort and experience of the soul through the human incarnation. Okay? Does this make sense? Okay? I'm trying to find ways for you to, to think about it. What is life made from? Why am I here? What's going on? Well, I cannot tell you the truth. I cannot lie either, but I cannot tell you the truth because the truth is an experience. It's not a fact. It's not information. Okay? What I can do is chit-chat with you and hope that you will summon an experience tonight that will make you feel what is living, what is life, okay, through experiences. Make sense? All right. Oh, let's go ahead with the worst part of the seminar right away. We're going to go through the most disgustful less comfortable experience of the entire seminar, so then we can be happy, okay? We're just going to resolve that. Hmm. I would like you to pick a moment that you felt abandoned. We're not going to do therapy here. No one talks to no one, okay? It's self, okay? So you can pretend you're not crying and whatever. It's okay. No one will care. They're too busy taking care of how they look towards you, so... <laughs> okay, now let's, let's not play drama, okay? Don't pick your worst, your worst life trauma. Take a moment you felt abandoned or rejected, okay? Try to think a moment in your life it existed. Close your eyes and start breathing. Summon back the emotion. Don't try to resolve it. Don't forgive it. Don't get free of it. Don't change it. Become aware of the experience of abandonment or rejection. Pull it out, feel it, just sit there. Just look, feel, breathe. This is a controlled observation of a moment of suffering. Sit still in it and discover that it is losing its power over you because you are paying attention to it. Notice that what was disturbing at first now is information. Uncomfortable information, but information nonetheless, because you pay attention to it. Come back. Breathe. Relax. Okay? You're not late. Okay, in case you wonder. Breathe and relax. Think about it. You paid attention to it, it lost its power over you. Okay? Close your eyes again. Breathe.
Imagine every cell in your body is a happy face. Imagine every cell in your body is a happy face. <coughs> Get back to the state of joy by concentrating on it. For no reason other than just wanting it. And relax. Okay, come back here. See, that was easy. Pay attention to an experience of suffering. It rolls back. You acknowledged it. You didn't resolve it. You paid attention, you accepted it, it lost its power over you. Paid attention to an experience of happiness for no reason, just I'm made with happy faces. And you, you kind of rebalance yourself out. Okay? So your mindset will have an effect on you. The way you observe things, the way you digest life events. Okay? There's a reason why we don't pay attention to our emotions. These reasons are survival instincts. We were made that way. Okay, so if you are in denial, it means that you're doing exactly as you are programmed to do. Okay? But now let's talk about this. Okay? There's a human here. <laughs> There's an experience of happiness here. And an experience of unhappiness here. Kindergarten level wisdom. Then you enlighten and you don't need me anymore. <laughs> so, I just ask you to reawaken an experience where you felt either abandoned or rejected. Okay? Without playing the drama, without making a scene, simply breathing in the uncomfortable, there's an emotion. Okay? We keep these emotions inside us. Emotions condense in some, si some sort of cement. Okay? And it makes, it makes building blocks. Okay? So we have blocks that we pile up. Some are triangles, some are circles, yes. <laughs> So we pile up blocks in between us and the experience of happiness. Okay? We also build chains to stuff that is stuck below. Okay? We have various links and chains. Okay? So until we discover the art of emotional construction or destruction kit. That's improvised, by the way. Okay, I didn't prepare my speech. We're in some kind of fortress. Okay, some kind of dungeon chained to cause of suffering, with blocks building a fortress around us, so we cannot get to the state of happiness. Okay, just basic design. What are these building blocks? There are three types of emotional clogs we have, okay? Abandonment. Rejection. Guilt. Abandonment, rejection, and guilt are the emotions that clog in blocks and build a fortress around us. Okay? All you have to do to be free of these building blocks is to gaze at them. Consciousness will dissolve them. 
if you don't want to look at your experiences of suffering, your soul will project it in your life. And then bad stuff happens to force you into these emotions. If you take the time to contemplate your emotions before they are dense enough to manifest in the physical reality, they won't manifest in physical reality. If you take the time to dissolve your emotional blocks before they create events in your life, they won't. And then you have only blessings. Okay? This is how we manifest. This is how we create. We don't create the good stuff. We simply stop creating the bad stuff. Okay? How do you do that? One block at a time. One emotion at a time. You will sit and observe. But that's not enough. You need to know why it's still there. You have chains. Okay? There are attachments. I am attached to my wife, I am attached to my mother, my sister, my objects, my car, my this, my that. We aim to get to an experience called non-attachment. Non-attachment does not mean get rid of. Okay? You still have things. You still have relationship with people. It's good. Okay? It's a blessing. But when it has to go, you let go instead of trying to hold on. Can you understand this? How we fight to prevent life from doing what it was supposed to do, which is impose suffering on us so we can learn how to stay in balance. Until we are free from these kind of lessons and we can only take care of the happy stuff. That's cool. You can buy a hundred new age books who tell you you can be happy all by with the correct mindset and think good and do this mantra, take this pill, <coughs> smoke the good thing, whatever. And find enlightenment, okay? There's many ways to get enlightenment. But what is enlightenment? We should try to find a good definition to what is enlightenment. So, how about we take the definition of Sakyamuni Buddha? He's not so incompetent. I think he had some good ideas. Enlightenment is not suffering. Okay? That's his definition. So, basically, he doesn't say what enlightenment is. He said, he describes what enlightenment is not. Enlightenment is not suffering. When there's no more, when there's nothing in you supporting suffering, you're enlightened. So this is why it's always happiness. But you don't attain enlightenment. You stop attaining non-enlightenment. Okay? You stop supporting what is not enlightening you. Enlightenment is extremely easy. Look at everything that makes you suffer until it dissolves. These are attachments. Okay? Our attachments keep us in the dungeon. The dungeon is built with bricks of abandonment, rejection, and guilt. Breathe. Relax. We're not going to spend the entire weekend about this. This is just to get us moving. Then we speak of the happy stuff. It's okay. Why don't we take care of our emotions and attachments? There is something called denial. I was speaking of denial before. That's the last uncomfortable information I'm going to give for the entire seminar. Okay? What are our denials? There is fear, shame, and pride. Okay? Hello. 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 Take time to sit in appropriate place. It doesn't matter. Thank you. You can go to Susie's in the back. Thank you. Sorry. Will they have two chairs? Okay. Okay, so you, you get this? There are denials. Denials is what sticks us here, okay? Denials are fear, shame, and pride. You can take them or not, in note or not. It doesn't matter, okay? The important thing is to know that we are stuck because of our attachments in a fortress made of emotions, okay? When these emotions are freed by looking at them, by breathing into them, 
happiness comes all by itself because there's nothing pulling you out of it okay does this start to make sense okay I can't transmit to you the secret of life but I can transmit to you information wisdom that will stimulate your idea of how you could do that okay so this is what we call integration integration is comfortable suffering <laughs> Integration is willingly sit in an uncomfortable emotion for a short moment of time, 5 to 15 minutes, until it loses its power over you. Okay? We're going to do a few exercises, very easy. First of all, please close your eyes and breathe. Imagine every cell of your body is a happy face. Simply feel happy. Visualize that you are made with happy faces. And breathe deeply in your abdomen. Relax. <sighs> okay, that was cool. That wasn't hard. That was easy. <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask you another one. Remember earlier I asked you, can you pick a moment you felt <coughs> abandoned or rejected? Now, I'd like you to be courageous. Pick a moment you felt guilty lately or far in the past. Don't pick your worst life trauma. Just think about a situation you felt guilty. Okay? In your teenagers, you certainly have something in there that is based on shame. <laughs> <laughs> or pride or something and feel breathe and sink down in the guilt without dramatizing without the theatrical scene just sink in the state of guilt to feel it don't try to forgive it don't change it don't resolve it don't think about it just feel I felt that Simply by sinking into it, it starts to lose its power over you and it becomes information. Uncomfortable information, I agree. Okay? And relax. Okay. It doesn't need to be torture. Okay? We're speaking of happiness. It doesn't show right now, but we're speaking of happiness. Or at least what pulls you out of it, okay? It, it is all these weights that we carry on our heart and soul that makes it impossible for simple happiness to rise for no reason. Just because you want it, okay? <laughs> ah, go like this. Okay, that was enough. Ah, seminar is over. Now we can start speaking of the seminar. <laughs> okay, it always takes us a while to decide to take care of an experience of life because we are either afraid, ashamed, or true proud. Okay, worst fear is fear of being afraid, worst shame is ashamed of being ashamed, and worst pride is be so proud about it. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm proud, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah some people are like that. I simply have to recognize myself. <laughs> so pride is a legitimate defense mechanism that we hold that is meant to perpetuate life. Thanks to pride, shame and fear, we're still alive. But because of fear, shame and pride, we also die in suffering, usually after a long sickness. Okay. <sighs> Deny is what we do to not look at an emotion. When we don't look at an emotion, what happens? Life pushes it up to us. The same thing keeps happening. 
The same thing keeps happening. It's happening over and over and over again. Why? Each time a bit stronger. Each time a bit more pain in the arse. Because your soul is trying to tell you, look at it. Pay attention. Look, sit, breathe, exist. No, this is suffering. Until you have no more choice, you'll be stuck in a hospital bell, a bed, you'll be, you'll be without a job somewhere, you'll be hurt, you'll be incapable of resurrecting your loved ones that are dead. And you'll, life will find a way to force you, look, this is suffering. Okay? And I heard a lot of New Age hippies with healing <coughs> rocks and smoking incense of that wonderful country, tried to prove to me that they could avoid suffering because of their meditation. <coughs> well, I just said, cool, you're so good. When you attain self-realization, please tell me I want to become your disciple. After a few years, uh, <coughs> Maha, there was this thing about pride you said that maybe, <laughs> what was that again? <laughs> Jesus said, why do you think the suffering comes in vain? Don't you know my father has a plan? This is what Jesus said to the sisters of Lazarus when they asked for help. Then he went and did the cool stuff. But that was not the teaching. The first thing that the Buddha said, there are four truths that I have understood through enlightenment. The first truth is there is suffering. The second truth in Buddhism, there is understanding of suffering. To understand suffering, you have to study it. To study it, you have to look at it. And you don't look at an emotion, you feel it. That's the organ of perception at the emotional level. <coughs> Third truth of the Buddhist wisdom, there is extinction of suffering or cessation of suffering it stops the fourth truth that the Buddha taught there is no suffering okay there was an experience why are you why are we here why are we here trying to be loved and love and then we screw up Actually, when you think that you screwed up something in life, it's a misperception, it's a misunderstanding of suffering. You were doing your best, were you? If you think when you screwed up in the past, you said the wrong thing, did the wrong thing, blah, 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 or just did not act, you did not screw up. You are doing research and development. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lab, you're trying, let's say if I do this, oh no, it didn't work, I shouldn't have, and then shame, and guilt and all these stuff and build blocks and stay attached and all this stuff naturally happens, okay? Because of denial. <laughs> so you're still alive, but you suffer. You are not evil. You are incompetent to the best. <laughs> Trying to love that way. No, nope. kicking someone's ass did not bring me a sense of feeling loved by others. It brought me a sense of justice. <laughs> I was the target. Curiosity killed the cat, but for a while I was a suspect. <laughs> yeah, if you don't mind closing your communication devices. Because the ego always tries to find a way out of understanding suffering. That's denial. That is his way of working. It's okay. Your ego is your best friend. It's not mean to me. Maybe you read somewhere your ego is what makes you do all these evil things. That's a misunderstanding. The ego is what is doing research and development. <laughs> the ego is your best friend. It wants what is best for you. It's trying to love as strong as it can. And it's incompetent. Okay? So. If you go into this self-therapeutic approach to take care of your own stuff, instead of looking at yourself as a bad person doing mistakes, you might look at yourself as someone trying his best and go with it with a self-love. 
<coughs> self-esteem, self-appreciation. Okay? So because of denial, you build for yourself low self-esteem. Low self-esteem is a cause of suffering. Or because of pride, you build high self-esteem. High self-esteem is a cause of suffering. Okay? Esteem is a cause of suffering. Okay? On your personal growth, stop trying to have self-trust and self-esteem. Okay? You're just going to suffer more. Get instead into the mindset that there's no worth nor worthlessness. We don't have value. We, do, we have love. Okay? We're not a piece of shit or a wonderful person. We're the experience of love. All right? So that's a more positive way to handle it. Instead of, I mean, you're such a good person, you're going to hate yourself when you do a mistake. Or if you're such a bad person, you're going to hate yourself even if you do a good thing. Okay? Because of high or low self-esteem, supporting the concept of self-esteem in you will inevitably bring suffering because self-esteem is based on competition amongst other humans. <coughs> It's always in relation to others' type of goodness and badness and this and that. Comparison means separation. It's not oneness. It's separation. It will lead you to the abandonment. Or rejection. Or guilt. Okay? So you have all these people trying to discover how worthy they are and how wonderful they are. And what they want is discover how they are loved, not how they are wonderful. Not the value they have, but to be reassured there is love. Breathe. <sighs> okay? So you don't have to become a performant human being, okay? <laughs> You don't have to be efficient in your self-therapy. Just do it at your own rhythm, at your pace. Okay? With a vision where separation, competition, comparison are not options. Okay? I will be loved when they bow to me. What the heck is that? Okay? That's a cause of suffering. I will be happy when he sees me bow and acknowledges. Sometimes we do that or boss, or wife, <laughs> I recognize myself. <laughs> we have to put a bit of humor in there, even if it's the truth. <sighs> Self-worth and worthlessness <coughs> will not bring you far in your lab, in your research of experiencing love. Okay, bitching will won't either. <laughs> compassion will be useful. Okay, if you cannot be compassionate, be respectful. Start with that. Okay. <coughs> How do we dissolve? It's extremely hot. Find a solution. Thank you, Corey. Love you. Ah, <laughs> oh, we've known each other for hundreds of days. <laughs> <That's a joke. coughs> Our savior, <laughs> first the chair, now the air. Wow. What's the, what's the next time? Food? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's good, these moments are good, just to give you a break. We went to tons of information since the last half hour or something. Tons of stuff that just triggers experiences in you. But this is why it starts to make sense. You'll notice something. I never speak of something thinking it's the truth. I just refer to experiences. You felt this, you felt that, what do you think? Look at it, think about it. Okay to trigger experiences in you so that you will find out on your own. So now you see, it doesn't matter if I'm enlightened or not. It doesn't care. I might be a fraud. Okay? It doesn't matter. What you experience is the truth. What you experience brings you something or not. 
Okay? So you don't have to trust me nor fear me. Okay? And that should be how you do all your spiritual work. Based on experience. Okay? You can read tons of books. You can read the mantras and the techniques and this and that. Even my own books about the mantras I teach. Okay? You can do whatever you want. It will not bring you the wisdom of stopping, looking inside, this is what I feel. Okay? Because the soul perceives experiences. The human perceives information through senses. Soul perceives experiences. Okay? So when you take the time to allow the soul to contemplate that was painful, now you're going to stop doing it. Okay? You can try to convince yourself, I'm going to stay in balance on my bike. If you didn't fall and hurt yourself, you won't understand. Your nervous system won't participate. Oh, okay. Why the hell should I stay in balance and put effort in that? <coughs> because it hurts. Okay, I'm going to do it. All right, I'm going to stay in balance on my bike. All right. Okay. Whatever you do in life, you experience things that will bring you happiness and say, oh, that's a good thing to do. And suffering, oh, that's not a good thing to do. Let's try the happy thing. Okay. If you consider only your experiences of suffering, you won't get it. You still need the experiences of happiness. Okay? You need all of it. But if you, I mean, you've been through happiness and suffering so much in your life, maybe generating new experiences is not really what you need right now. Maybe you should stop and look at the raw data you have. Okay? Because right now, there's just piling up. Right here, okay? Building a wall around you. So that is what we call integration. Integration is to take what was outside and put it back in. She told me I was an asshole. What hurt me is that I believed her, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Bring inside, because what the other person says does not have power over me. The only thing that has power over me is my interpretation of what I perceive, okay? So if someone tells me I'm a wonderful person, pride grows, someone can affect it, okay? Instead of bringing, you're so wonderful, oh, I love this person, she thinks I'm wonderful. Am I wonderful? What do I feel? If you go to the feeling, you'll drop out of the mind value system, I'm wonderful, you'll go into, I feel loved. You'll go to the experience. It won't be value, it'll be love. Okay? Value is in the mind. You know, it crunches numbers, make sure it adds up to zero. Nothing. <laughs> Can I just take the boxes and throw them out? No. I tried. Denial. Oh, I have no emotions. Okay. Ten years later, I don't have emotions, I have a cancer, I have this leg broken, I have my car not running good. I mean, it's going to project outside, it's going to run after you, okay? This is how the soul works. Soul gets into the human, radiates its experience. Human has tons of filters and breaks, and the happiness of the soul shining through just gets a bit of the information through that these blocks, and everything is tainted and soiled by the emotions that are still clogged in there, okay? This is why... It is very useful to take time to go suffer consciously and comfortably. Don't torture yourself. But you will not find happiness until you take a moment in your life to say, that did not feel good at all. I loved this car so much, and the, as the other asshole scratched it, okay? And I suffered pain. Not because of the outside asshole, because of my attachment to the brand new car, okay? Because of my feeling of what do I have inside that allows the outside to have power over me, okay? What is around me that affects inside? The only legitimate suffering we have is someone, is it only if someone threatens your life. If someone puts a gun on your head, he might actually have the power to impose suffering on you, okay? But if someone offended your car, but you can still drive it. And you'll do the insurance game or you won't. I mean, 
I know, I understand, it's not fun, okay? But look at how much it will get you mad as opposed to other people, like someone scratched my car, okay? Big scratch like that. I said, oh, I'm gonna go to repair it. Finished. No, no other reaction. It wasn't dramatic. It was, there's a scratch. It's going to be more beautiful if I put black stuff in there. I went to the car shop and bought the good equipment to just fill the big line again. That's it. I could have been mad and repaired my car. I could have been happy and repaired my car. Okay? Because I know that the scratch on my car won't prevent me to eat, won't put a gun on my head, won't deprive me of my shelter. Question I have for you, like that. Hi. Hello. Take your time. Take your seat. Simple question. Do you eat every day? Normally. Normally? Good. You're still alive, so I guess there's something positive in there. Thank you. Do you have clothing? You seem to have clothing. Okay. <laughs> you have shelter? You live in a home? Somewhere? There's a roof? You don't have storms on your back? Okay. And no one is threatening your life right now? Okay, threatening to kill you at this moment? No, okay. So basically, you have everything it takes to be happy. Because all that you really need to stay alive, you got it. Everything else is the dream. You know when the Buddha say everything is an illusion? That's not what the Buddha said. The Buddha said, what you perceive is an illusion. Okay, it didn't say this is not real. <coughs> He said, what you perceive of it is an illusion. Okay. This is real, but it's not a table. Okay? The table is the illusion. Because if children would come in running, they would hide under it, it would become a shelter. If just like that, it loses its property, it's our own identity, because someone uses it in another manner, it means that it's an illusion. This is not a table. Okay? We can say it's matter, it's made of wood and steel, maybe, okay? But it's not a table. I use it as a table, I put stuff in there. So I'm not gonna say, oh, can you put this container of liquid substance that I drink on this flat surface, a thing that I can just, no, can you put the bottle of water on the table, please? I mean, we need to be efficient in our words. But because of our need to be efficient in wording, communication, we forgot what was reality and we took for granted that this was a table. But it can stop being a table like this. So it's not. It's matter. It's wood and steel. Unless you take the wood and the steel, you put it in the furnace and now it's some other type of matter. So we can't say it's wood and steel, we can say it's matter. Until you put it to high enough temperatures, it will just convert back to energy. So it's okay, so it's not matter, it's energy. From now on, right now it seems to be standing still. Okay? But we prove scientifically that this is made of energy. So what we can say is that it's made of energy. So it's not a table, it's matter, but even that is some level of illusion. We'll refine it. It's not matter, it's energy standing still. Why is it standing still? Because it remembers its place. It has memory of its property. So if this energy remembers something, then it's mind. Okay? This is what the Buddha said. All of this is mind. Okay? He did not say everything is in your mind. No. Everything is mind. Okay? Everything is taught that gave property to energy and fixed it in the way and then you have laws of nature, creation. What you perceive through your senses is an illusion. But this is real. Why? Because I've experienced it. I felt it under my knuckles. They're not my knuckles, but I felt it. I'm gonna use the words I have to refer to it. And you heard the sound. <coughs> okay, so there's something there that makes it real. So the Buddhist misinterpretation of it's all in your mind and everything is an illusion, okay? Well, you can go sit in your cave for 20 years and fix a point and wait for enlightenment, okay? Sometimes it does come. 
but you can still be here and enjoy your car and your family and friends, entertain yourself, play with causes of suffering and causes of happiness, and eventually you will find an experience of bliss, enlightenment, call it whatever you want. And you will stop being affected by illusion. The illusion is that she called me an asshole. The reality is the shame I have that gave it power. You understand this? The reality is what I experience. The illusion is how I interpret through senses. Okay, that was heavy information. Is it starting to make sense, the thing about the illusion and reality? Truth is an experience. It's what I feel. Information is knowledge. It has to do with facts. Truth does not have to do with facts or accuracy of information. It has to do with experience. 2 plus 2 equals 4. That's a perception. It seems to be in the system that we were taught. Yes, of course. We're going to use this system. We're not going to reject the wisdom we have in our society because we need it. Let's talk about another system that is an illusion that has power over us. There's a circle with lines and arrows pointing, okay? And if the arrows don't correspond to the good moments, you're going to be late at work and they're going to hate you and you're going to be a bad person, okay? You're going to feel lots of emotions. How much power did you give to your schedule? Time, structure. You see, there are causes of suffering in this system. Why do we have time? The goal of having a time reference was for us to be efficient. So we're going to keep it. It's wise. It doesn't mean that you are guilty of something if you don't obey. Lines on a circle. Okay, numbers on a clock. You don't have to be bad if you don't fit in the system. The system was built for us to be more efficient. But look at the power it has over your emotional state. That's the illusion. Breathe. <sighs> All right. How do we free ourselves from the systems? To free yourself from the system, the first thing you have to do is stop running away. Remember that you use time as a system to be efficient at work. Everybody gets at the same time, people obey systems and rules. We don't like the system, but if you don't stop at every red light, you might have something in nature tell you you should have. Okay? But a red light does not have the power to stop your car. The red light suggests that you should, on your own, do something about it. Okay? But the red light has no power over you. It's information. You're going to decide what is the truth of that. I'm still alive, waiting for the light to be green. Or I'm dead because screw the system. Well, that's research and development. <laughs> okay. So you see, systems are good. Okay. Fight the system, cause of suffering. Enslave to the system, cause of suffering. Use the system. But stop perceiving the power it has over you. Now it's too cold. <laughs> Are you conscious? <laughs> yeah. They want it colder. I do have these perceptions. Okay? And I see people putting on their sweaters and I I mean Yeah. Alright. Is it entertaining to the best? Okay. It makes you feel that maybe there's a way out of suffering. Let's use another system, authority. Are you obeying your boss? Or else he's going to be mad at you? Do you have a symbol of authority in your life that has power over you? Solution is not to flee away or to tell him to screw himself. That's the cause of suffering. <laughs> it's to change your perception. If your boss gives you money because you willingly did what he asked you, you're just doing business. Because you are free 
to enact according to instructions, not orders. You're not enslaved to orders or else he can kick you out of your job. No, that's misperception. Do your best in doing what are the instructions to the best of your ability so that he will remember to do his best to give you exactly what he's supposed to give you. Money, okay? So that's another perception. Don't flee from life. Readjust your perception. Free yourself not from the cause of suffering outside, which was your job. Yeah, I'm sorry, we're harassing you and everything. But we just, we're trying to find balance. <laughs> Humor is good. <laughs> so you see, if you fly, flee away from the system in denial, I'm too proud to obey. I'm ashamed I did bad. I'm afraid of his, my boss's reaction. Whatever the denial you use, if you flee from the outside cause of suffering, you'll find another job. It'll be just one tad worse. After the first two months of excitement are gone, when you get back in the rolling, you're gonna do exactly the same thing because your soul said, I still did not understand how to stay in balance. Okay? Thank you so very much, Sukide. Thank you. So what's the solution? It's to stop perceiving your boss outside having power over you. It's to look the shame you have. You're afraid of his judgment. You're afraid of being abandoned if he doesn't like you. Because your boss is a symbol of authority and you were trained by your parents to react in this or that way towards authority. So you go back to your parents. Your difficulties with police officers? Oh, I hate those police officers that all gave me a ticket. You still think that your parents were, were spanking you when you were young because they hated you. No, they gave you a bit of suffering hoping that you will avoid stronger suffering. Okay? Giving you a little correction sometimes. Some parents are screwed up and they beat you up. I mean, <laughs> they have their own cause of suffering. They impose it on you. I understand their suffering in that. Yes. I'm talking of the general idea of they're trying their best to love you even if they are incompetent. Okay? They're doing research and development. <laughs> yes. Okay. Compassion is understanding we're all doing our best. If, 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 a, if a woman beater would know the experience of what he's imposing to others, he would stop immediately. Okay. But it's not legal to go kick their ass. So don't. Because then you have the police tell you you didn't have to kick the ass of the ass kicker. <laughs> because we have a system that is made to prevent suffering even if it's not perfectly adequate to all situations. I understand. Take care of yourself. Okay? Take care of yourself. What in me hurts? He called me a bitch. He threw me out of my job. He made a scratch on my car. What am I attached to? Self-worth? physical value of things, aesthetics, what will I look like, what will he think of me, what am I attached to, what's the emotion, do I feel abandoned, rejected, or guilty, what am I attached to, and what is the emotion, you have the key components of resolving your trials in life, you don't need to intellectually understand them, you simply have to sit in the suffering not support it. <coughs> Some people play the victim. They suffer from abandonment, they put more, waiting for the Savior. Okay? That's ego also, that's cause of suffering. Eventually you'll see that playing the victim will not bring you satisfaction. Consciously, non-dramatically sitting in your emotion and feel, and you take a bit of notes, You'll destroy the page right afterwards. You're just putting words so it's easier for your mind to comprehend. Sometimes it's good to write key points. Not write the entire story after 15 pages. You're not feeling your emotions. You're just writing a novel. Okay? <laughs> key points. Asshole. Made a scratch. Lost it. Felt abandoned. Ah. Okay, happy face. Okay? Train yourself to move. Happy suffering. Happy suffering. 
get yourself moving, all right? <laughs> Discover truth through experience, okay? One of those experiences will be a break right now because some people are starting to rule, okay? <laughs> the bathroom is on the right. Five, ten minute break. <laughs>